following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! This is Talkin' Cowboys. Streaming live from the Dallas Cowboys World Headquarters at the Star in Frisco. First down. Hand off, Elliott plowing to the goal line. Barry, sacked by Lord. Prescott keeps it, and he bangs it into the touchdown. And now your hosts, Isaiah Stanback, Heckma Harrison, Rob Phillips, and Kyle Yeomans. It's a wonderful Tuesday edition of Talking Cowboys on DallasCowboys.com and the various streaming platforms. Welcome in to the SWBC Mortgage Studios from the star in Frisco. It's the normal crew as always here on this Christmas week, this happy holidays week. Kyle Yeomans alongside resident Super Bowl champion Isaiah Stanback, our professional football analyst, Mr. Heckma Harrison, and then the great Cowboys insider, Fred, fresh off of his phone call with with 105.3 The Fan, and straight off the radio, straight into your headphones, your Bose Quiet Comfort ear, earbud headphones today. It's Cowboys Insider, Ooh, good product placement. Rob yes. Phillips. Thank you, thank you. I've, I've tried, I've learned, I've been here at this company for two years, and I feel like that's one of the first lessons that you learn while in the, inside these walls, is to, to product place. But, uh, boys, I mean, there's a lot of news for the Cowboys over the last... Um, about 24 hours, I guess, since we last recorded this, and and some of it has to do with injuries. Some of it has to do with what the owner said on 105.3 before Rob Phillips was on there, um, and we'll talk about what Jerry Jones said in his interview this morning. But uh, we also saw that anything can happen in the NFL last night, as on Monday Night Football, did it... raise your hand if any of you guys thought that the Bengals were going to take down the Steelers. Anybody? Anybody? And the points. And the points. And the, and the points. points. No, yeah, yeah, joking, yeah, joking. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Stop it. Kyle, I benched Roethlisberger yesterday. I mm. benched Roethlisberger in my well, fantasy. So that, that tells you everything you need to know. Did it, we pick that game? We, we did not game, because did no, I didn't think no. it no, – no, none of us would have picked the Bengals in that game at all. There's no way any four of us would have picked them. I, I guess you could have Isaiah's, been Roethlisberger. Isaiah's kind of suggesting he did. Yeah, there's no way. I sat I Ben Roethlisberger it. against Cincinnati. What does that tell you about my confidence level in well, that game? your confidence level is very low already because you are in last place of our pick So <laughs> – I'm with you, buddy. Yeah. That's because we're brothers. I'm just <laughs> – we're happy and we're singing uh, <laughs> in the basement. Oh, in the, in the basement, in the the dweller. Whenever it comes to the uh, to the pickums, we'll we'll get to our pickums on Thursday. But uh, yeah, anything can happen with the uh, with the NFL any given week, and we saw that yesterday with the Bengals taking down the the, the Pittsburgh Steelers. But I want to get into a couple Cowboys notes here, uh, guys. As yesterday, Mike McCarthy talked about Leighton Van Der Esch, who suffered a bit of an ankle injury. It was not uh, any kind of break; it was a sprain, is what they uh, originally had marked it at Rob, but what are you hearing about Leighton Van Der Esch and what did Mike McCarthy have to say about that first round linebacker's injury again uh, yesterday? Well, he, I think Leighton said after the game he told Nick Eatman he, he thought it was high ankle. Mike McCarthy didn't determine it as such, but if it's high ankle or not, if there's some ligament damage there, some, some things that are really bothering him, then it's going to be tough to come back this week and Mike McCarthy said it could be a couple weeks well there's two weeks left in the regular season so uh we'll we'll see what happens Uh, they'll take a closer look at him throughout the week and you know maybe treatment can help it maybe I I, you know he's going to try or want to try to give it a go uh but Mike McCarthy didn't sound too confident that that Leighton would be ready to go in fact of all the injuries they had and they had a few injuries in the game Michael Gallup with a hip strain Mm -hmm. uh Antoine Woods with a sprained ankle um you know, Leighton's got the longest shot probably to play in this game Sunday. How big of a loss would that be for this defense, Isaiah, whenever it comes to, to Leighton Van Der Esch? Because we've, we've been critical of the linebackers, and that's no joke. I mean, or I guess that's no secret, rather, this season. I mean, we've been all over the linebackers whenever it comes to their play. Jalen Smith some weeks, other weeks it's Leighton Van Der Esch. But what, what kind of impact does not having 55 back out there again? Because we saw that earlier in the year, and it was kind of a mess. Be honest with you, if there was ever a game where we where we didn't necessarily need him as much, I think it would be this game. 
I think he's. I don't mm. think he's as mobile as like a Joe Thomas. So I think you know bringing him in and Jalen. I think we're going to need some guys to be able to run around at the second level um, to to handle this onslaught that we're about to face. Um, all this, all this moving, all this motioning, all these you know sprint outs and bootlegs. I think we're going to need some guys that can run around. And I think LVE is just a little a little stiff. So um, let him let him let him get healthy. And um, you know I think we'll be all right. Heckma. I couldn't. I'm on the whole other side of that, uh, <laughs> Isaiah. I think this is a. This would be a week that we would need him. Um, it is, and I think it. Obviously, he hadn't had uh, the best year from a production standpoint, but he has been a lot of the brains on the defense and. That's not saying a lot, I guess, when you're in last place as a defense. But at the same time, we have to please take into account um, that this is going to be an NFC East rivalry game. And it needs to be all hands on deck. But everybody's hurt at this point, And I did not like to hear high ankle sprain, man. They, it sounds so, oh, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. High ankle yeah. sprain. It's really nothing. No, high ankle sprain is a big deal. And guys have... To had to be out for months because of it. So I really didn't enjoy that. But, you know, LVE and his time coming back from just the clavicle, all of those things, man, he is, uh, he's, you know, had a lot of criticism this year. But, man, he, if we've had any success, 55 has been a part of it. Well, and if you think back to the Philadelphia game back in week eight, uh, in terms of volume linebacking, uh, Leighton Van Der Esch wasn't necessarily a, an effective player. He only had the two tackles. However, he did have that strip sack fumble in that game, and he hit Carson Wentz, and he knocked that ball free, and that was one of the, I think, three turnovers in that football game, Isaiah. So whatever you're talking about, Leighton Van Der Esch versus this offense, I know it's not Carson Wentz back there anymore. It'll be Jalen Hurts, as that was officially announced yesterday, that Jalen Hurts will be the starter against the Cowboys in Week 16. But do you think that not having that volume-style linebacker in the uh, in the middle of that defense could potentially make things uh, a little bit tougher on guys like Jalen Smith? No. I, I, like I said, if, if, if there's anything, any way in which we're going to miss him, it might be just from the intellectual side. I don't think anybody sitting here with a microphone in front of their face really understands who's really leading that. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we can make our assumptions, um, but we don't know how much how much responsibility he's really holding. We, can, we know what the the position typically holds in terms of responsibility, but I don't know how much you know, LVE actually has to has to do out there. Um, but um, like I said, I think we need to be more agile to anything this game. I, and I and I just think that you know whether he's injured or not. Obviously, we never want our players injured, but whether he was on the field or not, I think we're I think we're more mobile and we're more athletic um, with 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 Thomas and um, and Jalen out there. Jalen is agile. Just want to ask. He's a, 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 he can run in one direction. I'll okay. put him that way. Okay. I think he's fast. <laughs> yeah, he 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 can, he can run in one direction. I don't, I don't want to say he's fast anymore because we saw that he's fast without the ball in his hand. Huh? <laughs> How about that? That's fair. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> okay. What were you gonna say, Rob? Oh no, I mean uh, it'll be interesting to see how they how they divvy up the linebacker snaps if there's no Leighton in this game because I think Sean. Sean Lee had 27 snaps in the game, uh, spent most probably after Leighton went out. Um, Joe Thomas had 17. And look, they're, they're only playing two linebackers basically the mm-hmm. entire game at a time. It's mostly nickel, uh, sub-package work. So Sean Lee, you know, I know it's down the road here in his career. There are actually more questions to the coaching staff about would Sean Lee make a good coach after his playing career yesterday than – you know what's he what's he looking like on the field this year as a linebacker? But it's no um, good. wow! But I hint hint hint. <laughs> yep. I don't I, I don't I don't know. I, I mean I think he's. I, I wouldn't be shocked if that's in his future after he's playing for sure. But I mean it's funny when you think about Sean Lee's career. Some of his best games have been against the Eagles. I'm thinking of that that play a few years ago. He he yeah. stopped Darren Sproles in the backfield. The Cowboys come back and and get a big win. They're going to need him, you know, and, and, and Joe Thomas, I think, was underrated in what, even though the defense struggled early in the season, obviously, I thought he played pretty well with more snaps. I did too. So, so I think, um, yeah, I mean, they've, they've got some options, um, but, I mean, I'd rather, I'd like to have Leighton in this game uh, just, you know, somebody else to potentially cover back there because uh, Jalen Hurts presents a totally different dynamic uh, this week than, than Carson Wentz will. Speaking of option, I mean, there's a decision to be made around Leighton Van Der Esch coming up this offseason. I mean, this is the end of year three for him, and he was a first-round draft pick, and you have that fifth-year player option, uh, or team option, rather, that you could pick up on Leighton Van Der Esch. But 
Uh, Heckman, do you, what has been your your idea of Leighton this year, your evaluation of Leighton Van Der Esch this year? Because I think overall there's been some good from Leighton. As we've seen, he wasn't necessarily 2018 Leighton Van Der Esch, but uh, this is still one of those years where it's been injury-ridden and he's missed a ton of time. Yeah, it's beginning to be cliche uh, when you say I can't, you know, it's hard to to judge a guy in a season like this. Mm-hmm. Um, but the same would be for, for Leighton. But if the question is, will you pick up his option? Heck yeah, you know, two times uh, because you know how tough he is. And he's everything that we, we need uh, in a linebacker. I, I mean, coming off of injuries, he's fought to get back on the field. And I, I think with, with Leighton Van Der Esch on our defense, it just makes it that much better. We're trying to look back at a time of 2018, his rookie season, to see if he could conjure up some of that. I think he's grown uh, as a linebacker, but with our defensive front, it really hasn't, these guys hadn't had those lanes to run in. They've changed the defense, and there's been so many different things that has impacted uh, both of these guys' play. But if it's if you're talking about bringing Leighton Van Der Esch back and picking that fourth-year option up, I'm, I'm, I'm all on board for that. Rob? Yeah, I mean, I, I'd be surprised if they didn't. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, that, you know, I, I, it's, been a, it's been a tough year for him. You guys referenced the injuries. I think at times, you know, we've, we've gotten after Jalen Smith. Everybody has in terms of um, recognizing things and, you know, being tested with your eyes and, and diagnosing plays. I think you've seen plays where Leighton has – has had problems there too. I, I think you know you could put the whole all that on the entire front seven linebacking core with yeah. some things that the teams have done against them, especially in the running game. Um, but I still think they view him as a as a centerpiece for their defense going forward. Isaiah, yeah, if I, I'm gonna swipe it, I'm gonna swipe it up just like Jalen. I'm gonna swipe <laughs> it. Uh, I'm gonna pick it up and. Uh, the reason being is just I think I, I I get a vibe about LVE that he's that he's really coachable. You know, he's really coachable, that he's really dedicated, he's a hard worker. Um, he's not gonna complain. If he's if he's healthy enough, he's gonna play. Uh, so I, I think all the all the check mark all the all the, all the boxes that you want to check off, you pretty much get with him. Now there's obviously areas that he has to improve, but I think he's he's determined enough to want to improve in those areas. And anytime you have a guy like that, you want to retain him. And also not to mention the the defensive tackles. And heck, I think you did a nice job of, of talking about this a moment ago, but I want to go deeper into it because at the start of the season, we looked at these, li- or at these linebackers and said, if they can have a little bit of help from the defensive tackle spot, then we're going to feel yeah. better about how they are. And they didn't get that early That's on true. from Dontari Poe. We didn't get that early on from – I mean, we did maybe a little bit from Tristan Hill, but it was inconsistent from a second-year defensive tackle. That's yeah. expected. But – they haven't necessarily had that help at the linebacking spot. And maybe that's something that will grow into next year, but can you blame the defensive tackle in the push-up front just as much as the linebackers and some of their inability to make plays this year? They work together, and they work together, especially when you are you have a defense like a 3-4, two-gap responsibility. That's why they have the two-gap responsibility, to allow the linebackers to run freely. You saw at the beginning of the season when Isaiah was talking about Don Terry Poe just, you know, getting pushed to the ice cream truck, and, you know, it's, it's hard for any, <laughs> any linebacker to try and get through that. Too. And so for – in my in the Brinks truck and in my eyes, I just feel like when you look at the draft, it's going to be so easy to go for all these, you know, sexy centerpieces uh, and names. But the Dallas Cowboys need a big boy up front, a guy that can actually a couple of guys that can hold those offensive linemen up and keep them off of our linebackers so that they can shed and, and just run downhill uh, in the running game. What we've seen every time you turn on the tape, you see offensive linemen getting to the second even third level and before any I mean in in all the way to the safeties before anyone puts a hand on them and it's because of our lack of a push up front so you know look our linebackers have taken the brunt of the not the brunt of they've taken a lot of criticism Jalen Smith has but there's a cause and effect to all of this I mean obviously making a bad play is making a bad play but you have to be honest with yourself as an organization and say look scheme Personnel, all of those things may not have matched up very well, and, and the byproduct of, it, of that is the ranking 32nd on defense. 
I feel like one of the biggest things we talked about the entire offseason together was more size up front was going to free up the linebackers to go make a bunch of plays. Yep. And, yep. and that just that did not happen. I think it's gotten <laughs> Better at times as the season's gone on with Neville Gallimore. Uh, that might have been his best game uh, the other day. Yeah. Tristan Hill, is is his return and his development is one of the most critical things to this entire defense next year. Coming back healthy, uh, it's gonna, they've got to weigh that in terms of how they address that position because I know they like him, but I agree with Heckma that they've got to find some some studs inside to to help because that that might be the top priority honestly for me is yeah there's no doubt about it lve and Jalen smith were bamboozled they were led astray uh <laughs> run they, were, luck. they were run amok they were they were hoodwinked hood uh, <laughs> uh, uh, when you when you allow these guys just to come downhill, I mean they're two they're, they're totally different linebackers. Uh, the things that the things that that are being asked of them right now are outside of them. Um, it's outside of them. It's outside of them. It's outside of this scheme, and um, it's it's unfair in a sense. So in a, in some regard, you obviously you don't want to you don't want to judge them too harsh. But at the, at the same time, they're still professionals, bro. You're still professionals. And yep. You have to adjust. You have to adjust. even though it's not what you do, right? You still try to figure out a way. Right, and it's just it's just what it is. It's what you do in the league, right? Yeah, guess what? You might have been a quarterback, but now you're a receiver and you play everything on special teams. You just figure it out, right? You figure That's it out, right. and um, you know I, I don't think that these guys have figured it out to the level and the quality in which I think that that they're capable of. But um, LVE, and we're talking about him. Yeah, you bring him back. Yeah, I, I think so too. I'm right there with you guys, and I. I we're not necessarily talking about the linebackers in space. That's a different issue that I think the linebackers, that's that's mm-hmm. their problem. And we saw that with Jalen Smith and that, that the crossing route from Jordan Reed inside the 10-yard line, and then Jalen Smith was just kind of off kilter for a good amount of time on that play, uh, and it did not look good. There's there's problems with the linebackers, and there, there's definitely some improvement that needs to be had at that position, but they can definitely use some help, especially in the run game from that defensive tackle spot. Maybe Neville Gallimore will give that to you along the way. Maybe Tristan Hill coming back will find a way. Maybe you re-sign Gerald McCoy, but I'm going to make a prediction, and this might actually be better suited for the draft show, which is coming up at 10.30 rather than maybe the Talking Cowboys podcast. However, I'm (laughs) going to make a prediction. I'm going to make a prediction here. And my prediction is that the Cowboys are going to take a defensive tackle in the second round. I think they take a defensive tackle in that second round pick, and I think it's an opportunity for them to do it. Now, Heckman, what are you upset about? I'm with you, Kyle. I think that's that's my prediction. Say with your chest, Heck. Dog, you just plugged the draft show on our show. On our show. You see well, we talk about, I, I also plugged Talking it. Cowboys on the draft show, too. It. So. We didn't, we didn't okay, get a okay, tra- okay. Wait, yeah, hang okay. on. We, didn't, we didn't get a Transformers highlight video, though. You got draft show got that. <laughs> we didn't true. get that. Are you upset I'm that you made a, transfer, a Transformer hype video? Yes. I'm still waiting for my Transformers <laughs> video. It's okay, guys. I'm I'm still waiting on my Bose Quiet Comfort Airbus. You know, it's okay. I'll just I'll just be patient. That too. Everybody's upset. Everybody's upset about something. (laughs) Everybody's got something to complain about. When we come back here on Talking Cowboys, we're gonna answer your fan questions. It's fans on the fifty, so send them in to the Periscope stream. I've got a couple of them already lined up off of Twitter, but send in your questions about the Cowboys these final two weeks, and maybe even some off season questions. We'll answer them when we come back on the other side of the break. This is Talking Cowboys presented by Geico. There's nothing as unique as our eyes, which is why Essilor pioneers ways to make lenses as unique as you. Verilux for super sharp vision, Essential Blue for protection, and Grisol for freedom from glare. Three cutting edge solutions in a single unique lens. So whatever your needs, insist on Essilor. Visit your local Essilor experts and find the perfect lens for you. See more. Do more. Essilor. Since 1865, Stetson hats are American-made with pride right here in Texas. And Stetson is proud to be on the field with America's team. Want to show your Texas and team pride, too? You can. By purchasing your own Stetson, you can look just like how the flag guys do on field at every home game. 
Stetson Hats, the official crown of all self-respecting Cowboys, and your favorite football team. Get yours today at shop.dallascowboys.com or at stetson.com. I'm Jay Novacek, former tight end for the Dallas Cowboys. Back in the day, I was the guy who always got the tough yards, and that's why I run with John Deere today. In fact, I have a John Deere 3025E tractor that can handle any yard work I need to do, even the tough yards way out back. So if you have one acre or a thousand, John Deere has the equipment that's just right for you. Visit a John Deere dealer today and run with us. We are the official tractor provider of your Dallas Cowboys. Dear, it's 1908. Don't you think we should get electricity? Hmm, and stop using candles to see at night. It's just electricity lights up the room fast. It's more reliable than candles blowing out, and people seem to love it nationwide. Well, candles are... Dear, did you just run into the wall? Nope. May I have a new candle, please? Historically, switching to new technology is a no-brainer. Today, it's AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, secure, and nationwide. Switch to AT&T 5G. It's not complicated. 5G requires compatible plan. May not be in your area. See att.com slash 5G for you for details. Back to Talking Cowboys. Back here with Talking Cowboys, second segment. Whether you're listening to Talking Cowboys, trading those DraftKings fantasy football players, or working out, you can experience audio at a whole new level with your quiet comfort Bose headphones. Those Bose quiet comfort headphones, earbuds, the official earbuds of the Dallas Cowboys. Look at Heckma Harrison just fire in those Bose quiet comfort ear headphones. It's a symphony in my head. Yeah, it's a symphony in the head. That's the new saying apparently on <laughs> Bose Quiet Comfort. I, I'm sorry, Bose. What uh, you got, Isaiah? What you got over there, Isaiah? What you got? I don't know. They're, they're not Bose. I can <laughs> tell you that they're not Bose. The Walmart version. These are, these are, these are, hey, these are called that dudes. These are called that dudes. <laughs> that dudes. That dudes. It's, it's definitely not audio at a whole new level. Hey, uh, Rob's even rocking it's the Bose not. again today. He's got the bows back on today. Yeah, yeah, you guys all rocking the bows. I'm over here with the B-Box 3000s. You know what yeah, I'm saying? It's yeah. all good. Yeah, he's upset about good. it, too. I can tell. He's, he's a little salty. Also, oh, talk, yeah. speaking of salty, uh, Chris Beam, our fantastic producer in the back, Rob was Rob was talking about the Transformer hype video for the draft show that I made whenever the draft show lineup was announced a couple, I guess a month ago now, mm. which is crazy. Mm, um, that you made. Mm. And... <laughs> Chris Beam goes, Rob, you would be the Beatle <laughs> out of all of the Transformers. Like, we're please. like, oh my god, Damn, Chris. It's <laughs> the holidays coming at me like that? Damn. Uh, Rob, I That's think not you, you, Pete. That's not you, Pete. You're the Ferrari. Rob P. Island, he's got the Ferrari. I think Thank you, Rick. The, the, the stock car, like the, the NASCAR race cars that, that were on there for a split second. Talk about product what, placement. What would we all be, Kyle? What would you be? What would I I so I put I, I put myself as the bumblebee Whoa! on I would not mm. be the Winnebago. Uh, I put myself as the bumblebee. Chris almost fell out of his chair on that show. And the reason why I put myself okay. as the Bumblebee character is because he's like the new guy. But I actually caught some flack for that. They're like, oh, you think you're Bumblebee? I was like, no, I'm just the new guy of the show, of the lineup. All those other guys are like old friends and stuff. And so that's why I put myself as I don't as know bumblebee. though. I don't know. We've heard you drop that line of "I'm the host of this show." That's so, I mean, okay. I'm, that's I'm a- that was drawn out of portion. Hey, that hey, is- Rob. He also did. He t- today he did drop the video that I made. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> you heard that too? I edited oh, the wow. video and put the names on wow. it. Wow. And, and, you know, stuff. See, so, I think CBZ okay, pushed well, the play button. All right, though, I'm, I'm going to move so. right past this. I'm going to push on because nobody wants to hear us talk about this. Let's go <laughs> into another edition of Fans on the 50. Fans on the 50. <clears throat> Chris Beam, as always, doing fantastic work in the back. So our first question comes from Tony Baker. And Tony says, would the Cowboys consider packaging Zeke or Dak and a draft pick to pick up Mr. Trevor Lawrence from the Jacksonville Jaguars who currently hold that number one overall pick? And he said it would help with their salary cap issue. What do you guys say about Tony's question here? I mean, this is a, this is a fire one. We could maybe spend some time on this one. Uh, we're going to let uh, <sighs> Heckma, I feel like yeah. you would have something great to say here. <laughs> like, you see, you are, see, boy, you bad. Um, <laughs> Tony Baker, you got, you got a point. You got a point. And the salary cap is going to be a problem. Mm-hmm. But one of the things about the salary cap, salary cap problems in the Dallas Cowboys, we know how to maneuver around that. 
And, you know, look, there's a lot of schools of thought on Trevor Lawrence and he is the attractive pick. Uh, there are people that will be tanking for Tarzan. Uh, we will not be one of those teams. We will not be doing that. And the, even the notion of putting Zeke and Dak in some type of trade is like, man, we'd be giving up a dime for a penny. You don't want to do that as a team that is building towards the championship that you want. You have a lot of the pieces. I don't believe that anyone believes that their quarterback is the piece that you need. Dak has proven time and time again that he is a winner. He can get it done. So let's not even start that. Let's get us a big boy D tackle and uh, let's show, let's get this defense together, man. But don't start talking uh, tanking for Tarzan. That's not going to happen. Mm, no tanking for Tarzan from Heckma. Rob, who would you got on this one? I want Isaiah to go last. <clears throat> no, because trading trading players with big contracts it's not like you trade them and the contract just goes away there's that prorated uh, signing bonus money bo- yeah. signing bonus money that mm-hmm. accelerates into your cap so uh it's not that easy even if you wanted to do that uh it's fun to talk about but no i don't, I don't see that and i also see whoever's got the number one pick they're taking Trevor Lawrence and they're they're unplugging their phone because I think he's <laughs> as can't miss of a prospect as there is in the last several years at quarterback and I think whoever whoever gets him is going to take him no question whether it's Jacksonville or the Jets uh, you know, Kyle, there's there's a there's a comedian on Instagram by the name of Tony Baker, and he's one of my favorites. And I'm I'm not sure sure if this is the, the same Tony Baker because this is almost hilarious. It's hilarious, <laughs> and um, you know, I I, I, I Tony, I, we we appreciate your question, um, but I, I, I this is not a move that you make, man. You hold on to your guys, you figure out a way to man- to maneuver around them in terms of the salary cap. You you, you do what you do. You pay the GMs. Well, the GM pays himself uh, to do to do this that very thing. <laughs> And um, you know you have you have Will McClay and they got amazing amazing uh, scouting department. You let those guys go do what they do and fit guys into the system. So I, I kind of want to play a little bit of devil's advocate here, and I don't actually think Tony. Uh, thank you for your question. I think it's a great question. Uh, it, a lot of people might scoff at this question. But it's something you could consider, especially with the the salary cap looking like what it's going to look like by going down this next year, the the bigger piece of the pie going to Dak Prescott coming up in the next contract. I mean, there are a lot of factors going into this. And with Trevor Lawrence up at the top of the draft, I I tend to agree with Rob a little bit more of nobody's going to really give him up. At all, I don't. I don't see it. Would have to take a, a ransom of everyone's ransom to try and go up and get this guy, especially for a team that needs a quarterback, and that's going to be who ends up picking him, uh, Jacksonville or New York. Doesn't matter. They both need a quarterback. And then the third team that's in that list, Cincinnati. They don't need a quarterback, but they just won yesterday, so they're out of the running for that first pick. So there's a lot of things that go into this uh, this decision, but with the cap issue. Uh, taking a quarterback is not necessarily out of the question here. I don't know if you trade pieces to get there, but going and taking one of these quarterbacks, not just a Trevor Lawrence, but you've got a a Zach Wilson, you've got uh, a Trey Lance, a Justin Fields that are up there at the top of the draft. Heckma, would you think about doing that instead of maybe trading pieces away? Because you talked about you don't want to trade your future, which is Zeke and Dak, but you also don't want to hinder your salary cap issue, and that's what Dak and Zeke are doing at the moment. Yeah, and the thing, the great thing about our, our organization is our general manager is one of the best deal makers to ever be born. So he's, if, if he wanted to get that done, he could get it done. But I, I believe that everyone in this organization believes in Dak Prescott. And as it relates to getting some of those other names, I think we may be in pole position to take someone in the later rounds. I mean, I think the, if we're just going to throw out a, the, a guy like the Florida quarterback, he's Kyle Trask. You know, he, he's a good he's a Trask is, is a great uh, he would be a great pickup. But in later rounds, if he's there, uh, maybe as a developmental guy. And they talked about getting guys that you can develop to maybe use as trade bait for later. I, I don't know, but I don't think we're in a position to even be talking about replacing Dak at the, at this point. I think we have to go mm-hmm. into next season with trying to get our defense together and also getting some key pieces on our old line because we see 
what having these multiple injuries is going to mean is Lyle Collins is going to be is he going to be able to come back from the labrum how much life does uh, Smith have in, in him at the left tackle there's so many questions that have to be answered what we already have is the centerpiece of our organization in Dak Prescott so no I Justin Fields all of those guys I wish them well and I think that I hope that they are great pros but they won't be Dallas Cowboys mm. Rob yeah, I'll give you, uh, to bring it back to the Transformers, I'll give you the Beatle answer, the very boring answer. I, I think Dak <laughs> Prescott is the guy. He's the guy here. He's not, I just don't, I said this on the fan a minute ago, like, call me naive. I know they've got a lot of work to do, roll up their sleeves and get this deal done in the offseason, but I think it gets done. I still believe it gets done. I think, you know, I just mentioned in the same breath, Trevor Lawrence is probably a can't-miss prospect. However, when you find a franchise quarterback, and they found a franchise quarterback in Dak Prescott. Yep. I, I don't think you let him go. And I think by all accounts, he'll be healthy next offseason. They've, they've got to figure out uh, the money and the length of the deal. But I think we found out what he means to this team beyond the field, in the locker room, yeah. all that stuff. So I don't yeah. think you want to let that go. Isaiah? What Rob said. <laughs> that's a beetle answer. There you go. Uh, that's a that's a beetle answer if I've ever heard one. A double beetle. Double yeah. beetle answer. Uh, so in I'm looking at the comments on this Periscope stream because I was looking for some other questions in terms of fans on the 50, but uh, I don't even know how to say it. Is this OP18 brings up a good point, and he says, if the O-line can get a little bit healthier, you'll see Dak and Zeke flourish next year. And we had this conversation about Zeke yesterday. Of, of He'll be back, and we think he'll be back in terms of 2021 and what you'll see from him as opposed to what you've seen in 2020, and now that he's kind of hindered with a, a calf issue that might linger into the final two weeks of the season. But do you think that's the, the case? Do you think that both Dak and Zeke Isaiah are going to have a better 2021 season than you even saw this year? Because remember, even when Dak was healthy, he was still playing without Lyle Collins and without Tyron Smith on that offensive line at the same time. Yes, they'll be better. Yes, yeah, Zeke. I mean, this offensive line would be healthier, so that means when this offensive line is healthier, guess what? Your quarterback plays better. When this offensive line is healthy, guess what? Your running back plays better. So to answer your question, yes. Isaiah, are you okay? You good, dude? <laughs> I'm perfectly fine. I'm good. Are you, are you sure? <laughs> I'm 100% sure. Okay. All right. Well, uh, Rob? <laughs> you got to you gotta do an SLO commercial. You got to do an SLO. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. I'll go to a break. I'll go to a break. Thank you for sending in your questions on fans on the 50. Isaiah has forced us to take an early break so we can give him a shot in the arm, and that's the SLO commercial coming up. On the other side of the break, we've got more Talking Cowboys coming your way right after this. We're back with a tasty treat that's sweeping airwaves and taste buds. It's new Dr. Pepper and Cream Soda. Let's take a listen. Dr. Pepper and Cream Soda's here. A new combo that's music to my ears, okay. Let's play. Cream Soda and Dr. Pepper time. Pour it in a glass of ice. Ah, music to my ears and mouth. New Dr. Pepper and Cream Soda. A delicious duet. There's nothing as unique as our eyes, which is why Essilor pioneers ways to make lenses as unique as you. Verilux for super sharp vision, Essential Blue for protection, and Crizol for freedom from glare. Three cutting edge solutions in a single unique lens. So whatever your needs, insist on Essilor. Visit your local Essilor experts and find the perfect lens for you. See more, do more, Essilor. The Cowboys way, where 16 Hall of Famers and five championships shows us what success looks like, where turkey is always the second best part of Thanksgiving Day, where we are all defined by one single thing, the star, where we as fans know it's our job to keep the tradition going. Bank of America is proud to be the official bank of the Dallas Cowboys and to support the quest of living life the Cowboys way. Copyright 2020, Bank of America Corporation. Dear, it's 1908. Don't you think we should get electricity? Hmm, and stop using candles to see at night. It's just electricity lights up the room fast. It's more reliable than candles blowing out, and people seem to love it nationwide. Well, candles are... Dear, did you just run into the wall? Nope. 
May I have a new candle, please? Historically, switching to new technology is a no-brainer. Today, it's AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, secure, and nationwide. Switch to AT&T 5G. It's not complicated. 5G requires compatible plan. May not be in your area. See att.com slash 5G for you for details. Back to Talkin' Cowboys. This is another one of those episodes, ladies and gentlemen, that I wish, I wish we had behind-the-scenes footage for. I really do. I think it would be hilarious because we just figured out that Rob P. Island is not just Rob P. Island. It's Rob Dangerous P. Island because Danger is his middle name. So uh, there's a lot to middle go name, on here. Baby. Now, Isaiah has disappeared on us in the bottom left-hand corner because he's just on another level today. But guess what? You can see that. <laughs> Whether you're watching from home or you're on the Periscope stream, because with Essilor lenses, you can see every exciting play and every exciting move from Isaiah Stanback. With Essilor lenses, you'll see every exciting play. Book an appointment at your local Essilor experts and see what Essilor can do for your you. See more, do more Essilor. Oh, man. I just, I am... I that just happened. This is this is. I'm sorry, everybody. I really am. This is a fun show. <laughs> uh, Heckma Harrison, Rob Phillips, Isaiah Stanback. I'm Kyle Yomas. Just trying to keep this thing on the rails. The final couple minutes and <laughs> too late. Yeah, it's too already late. too late for that. Um, we did we did hear from Jerry Jones this morning, Rob, and and this was a couple. Minutes before you you had your hit on the radio this morning, but uh, Jerry went on there and kind of talked about this season and a lot of generalities of, of 2020 and the Dallas Cowboys, some of the challenges that they've had to deal with uh, as a front office. And I think uh, one of the things that stuck out from his interview was not only his answer about Dak Prescott and negotiations, which, uh, Rob, I don't know if you could decipher that for us in a minute, but I definitely couldn't at the same time. But uh, there was also no Pro Bowlers named yesterday by the Dallas Cowboys Mm. for the first time since 1989. And, Rob, his answer was kind of intriguing Mm. on that one because the way he spun it, one, was salesman ask if I've ever heard it of somebody who who hasn't had a Pro Bowler in in close to three or over three decades now. But uh, 1989 was the last time they had a Pro Bowler. And he said, well, there were Pro Bowlers on that roster. Roster. They just weren't Pro Bowlers yet. They went on to win three Super Bowl titles. But what did you take out of that from uh, from Jerry Jones today, Rob? And, and what else he That's had to share? Answer. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I see his point. Not necessarily that they've got a bunch of first and second year guys that are going to make a bunch of Pro Bowls. I think CeeDee Lamb is in that category. Yep. I just think it comes down to uh, availability for a lot of the guys, especially on offense. I mean, I think if they're if they're marginally healthy this year. Dak's probably in it. Probably at least one receiver's in it. Yeah. Zach Martin's in it. Tyron Smith is in it. So you you probably have a few on offense. Defensively, I mean, based on the way they've struggled this year, I don't think you could you could pick yeah. out a defensive player this year. Maybe D-Law. But I think injuries prevented them from at least getting, I don't know, four or five guys in the Pro Bowl this year on offense. Was there anybody, Isaiah, that you would look at and say there was a snub uh, in terms of the Pro Bowl? But the only one that even remotely comes to mind for me is Demarcus Lawrence. But even then, I don't know if the numbers stack up against the other edge rushers that ended up making that roster. No, I don't think anybody was close. I don't think anybody was close. I think the only reason why Martin didn't get it is because his injury. Mm-hmm. You know, he didn't have as much tick on the on the field. But aside from that, nobody was even close to being in the same conversation as a Pro Bowl. Yeah, that's a good point, Kyle. I mean, Tank does so many little things that help you. Yeah. But it's just in terms of the sack numbers, people that are voting are going to look at it and say, yeah, ah, no. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> Heck, my anybody that no, surprised you? In a, no, I mean, in a down year like we've had, I wouldn't have expected it. Um, and even offensively, if you look at any of our guys, as far as, you know, our rookies, who C.D. Lamb got off to a pretty good start, but then obviously with the quarterback changes – yeah, our offense just completely went off the rails. So uh, defensively, if I would have been shocked if anyone on our defense had made the Pro Bowl, that would have just been some home cooking. Crime. That would have been some payola going on. <laughs> <laughs> I think they outlawed that a long time ago. Oh but uh, I just uh, I didn't see it happen. I, I didn't think that it would happen, and wasn't shocked about it. I, I think you know. Uh, Mr. Jones's answer is correct. You, you know, you have to look at your team that way. Yeah, we've got some guys snubbed in 89, but on that team was one Michael Irvin as well. Yeah. So, I mean, I think we'll take the Super Bowls in the future uh, f- for this team. 
any day if we can get there. So I'm just, you know, look, Pro Bowls are one thing. And, and one thing about Pro Bowls, I think people have started over the years to discredit uh, guys that make the Pro Bowl anyway. So, it I mean, it, it may be, guy. look, it's a big deal going to Hawaii, doing all those things. But when, you know, Jalen made the Pro Bowl last year, and I think, you know, Kyle, you'll have some words about I do. that. So. I do have words about it. <laughs> but but you know what you know what that's let, go ahead Kyle go no ahead. no 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 yeah I want to hear what you have to say first <clears throat> well like would it have completely completely shocked you if Jalen made it this year because yeah because, because I, don't numbers, it, I don't know if I don't know if it would have yeah he's second in tackles and we're talking about people that are just you, if you just look at the stats. Plus, he got a pick on Thanksgiving in front of a national televised. That's mm. the kind of plays that you make that, that get people's attention. <laughs> wow. Like, that wouldn't have, like, completely, completely shocked me if he made it. <laughs> Plus, he made it last year, like you just That's, said. It's not a bad point. <laughs> also, uh, to kind of go along with the, the, the numbers that you were talking about and the tackle numbers, Tony Casillas tweeted on game day, and I shared this with Isaiah whenever I saw it in the in the, the studio while we were watching. Tony Casillas, of course, of course, Super Bowl champion with the Cowboys, he tweeted, he said, Jalen Smith is the best tackler 10 yards down the field in NFL history. And best 10-yard tackler in NFL history. And it's like, yeah, that's kind of true. I mean, he kind of waits for everybody to get to the line Man, of the game no and then finally takes him down. But you're, you're not wrong. I mean, that's what the Pro Bowl turns into at some point. And last year it was a fan right. vote that got him in as an injury replacement. And that's why Heckman and I have had this conversation on numerous occasions, whether it's before a high school football game or just like sitting down having coffee or sushi or whatever we're doing. It's it's always about Jalen Smith somehow. It always comes back to this. And he knows that that just grinds my gears that he made the Pro Bowl in 2019. But I don't see anybody on Rob, this roster did you get right invite to any of that? Oh my gosh! Here we go. No, I'm, I'm still waiting on mine. I, here, I didn't get an invite yeah. to any of that. So, actually. Yeah. so don't mean it, no, don't mean to like distract <clears throat> what you're talking about there, Isaiah. But what we should do, what we should do is let Pro Football Focus pick the Pro Bowl. I don't There'd think be a that's lot of case. guys in the Pro Bowl that you didn't think would make. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't because agree with that either. They have. Well, they have. I don't either, but I think Demarcus Lawrence is ranked up as one of the top DNs, and also <laughs> yeah. uh, Jalen Smith as a linebacker. So I don't know what they, uh, how they put these equations together out there in Cincinnati in Pro Football Focus, but I think they it, are not watching hey, the games. Jalen is an entrepreneur and, a, and an investor. He better invest in us. <laughs> oh gosh. But uh, slid him a twenty. I think maybe the only ones that you could have potentially put names in the hat for was D Law on the defensive side of the football and maybe Amari Cooper on the offensive side because of what Amari's been able to do at, Possibly cool. without yeah. without his quarterback. Yeah. I mean without a quarterback really. I mean yeah. you could talk about the numbers that he accumulated earlier in the season, but he's had a good year and he's most likely going to hit a thousand yards uh in the next two weeks without a, a singular quarterback throughout his entire season. So I think Cooper had a good run at it. I think Demarcus Lawrence has played well for those who watch it on tape. But if you're looking at the numbers, which is what Pro Bowler, uh, Pro Bowl voters do, it's ultimately not going to work out for the Cowboys uh, uh, for the Cowboys this year. But I'm, I'm, I'm actually a little surprised Zach didn't make it. I know he only played 10 mm -hmm. games this year so far but i i mean he's just got the name now you know six straight pro bowls i thought maybe that was still an, enough of time in, in on the field to get in but hey it's got to end sometime right yeah he it's unfortunate in, in the pro bowl he'll be he'll be back in there next year yeah, yeah. it won't take very long and so uh, i guess this would also mark him as maybe the first time in his career that he's not an all pro i mean that'll come later on and, and maybe he does yeah. Uh, yeah. make it back into that all pro list but at least this looks like it's going to be a <laughs> shot uh, in the wrong direction for him certainly here in 2020 it's been a rough year for him it's been a rough year for a lot of the cowboys and I, I, we're going to talk tomorrow about some more things that jerry said today about maybe when the season took a turn uh, and when you kind of saw the expectations shift because he had to topics of conversation about that today uh, and we'll hit it tomorrow. We'll also preview the Cowboys and the Eagles. It'll be the Cowboys offense versus this Eagles defense. Can the Cowboys have more success this time than they did back in week eight against Philadelphia? I certainly think so. I think all four of us would agree that they will have more success because there wasn't uh, it was kind of a low bar set in week eight against Philadelphia but that'll 
that'll be our preview tomorrow. But that's going to do it for us here on Talking Cowboys on this Tuesday. I want to thank you for joining us here over the last 45 minutes. For Chris Beam, back in the back. For Isaiah Stanback, Rob Phillips, and Heck Maharis. And I'm Kyle Yeoman saying so long. We'll see you tomorrow morning on Talking Cowboys. <laughs> this has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!